Hey, what's up, everybody? Tali Carr, Uncle Neely. I am blazer free once again. We are finished with practice number eight. Eight is enough for today in Colorado. Uh, Neely, you're at practice every day. We're getting closer and closer to seeing some scrimmages out there, maybe this weekend. And then we got the spring game coming up on April 27th. Uh, what did you see today? What, what stood out to you in practice number eight with the buffs? Well, first, let's discuss what I didn't see. And you started the show. I didn't see the blazer. I guess it's been returned to the African American Smithsonian in DC. I'm like and every other rocking the gray hoodie. Uh, every other black man in America. I'm I'm supporting Michael Jordan. And white person and Asian person and everybody else. I'm just on the, you know, I'm being like Mike, everybody else. Good to see you in the non uh, throwback blazer. But I tell you, Tolly, practice eight was a good practice today. I think the offense had the upper hand when it came down to to the red zone mechanics, uh, but it was a spirited practice. When you had the D line versus O line in their one on one drills, I would give the nod to the D line. But overall, Arrow is still pointing up in this program and officially past the midway point to the spring game. So you got fewer practices ahead and more practices behind you. So got to grind it out. All right, Coach Flea, a couple of days ago, he was talking about, man, we putting that ball on the ground too much. He was not happy with that. Uh, ball security. You, you talked about the running backs. How was that ball security today? Uh, ball security looked good. I did not see any fumbles. But I will tell you, a byproduct of fumbles is deliberately running the ball. This team last year did not have a lot of design runs in the offense. I think you're going to see that change this year, this fall. And so the running backs are getting – you know, a lion's share of opportunities to practice. And in that lion's share, fumbles are going to happen. Uh, but it's something that has to be cleaned up as we make our way through the spring and then through fall practice before the season starts. But part of that fumble ruski, if you will, is because these guys have not been getting a lot of reps in the past, and now they are. So ball security is going to be preached, preached, preached. Talk about the personnel a little bit in that running back room. Uh, we saw some faces out there last year. Uh, we've had an off season, people trying to build up on their strength, on their speed. Uh, what are you seeing from those faces uh, in the running backs room this year? So far it's the new face, uh, the freshman, true freshman Micah, who came here early. You know, he should probably be getting ready for his prom right now. Uh, but like so many other players have done in the past, Dylan Edwards, uh, Shadour, when he was at Jackson State, took the opportunity to come to college uh, for the, that spring semester of what would have been their senior year. So you have a true freshman out there, and he has really, man, been been bringing it. Uh, he knows how to run the ball between the tackles. He knows how to bounce it out. He's making catches. Uh, you got Dylan Edwards, of course, Savion, who transferred from Jackson State, and Alto McCaskill from Houston. But I think the surprise has been the freshman edition in Micah. Cause, because, you know, you go back to the big boys last year, McCaskill, we kept hearing, just wait, just wait. But it sounds like we've got some competition out there. Yeah, I think there's going to be some competition, but I also think there's going to be some uh, some complementary because these backs who are here all have different styles, all has different body types, all have different things and what they excel at. Uh, so I think that, yeah, at some point you're going to have a guy that's going to emerge that's going to be a part of the personnel group more than others. But I really do think all of them are going to see the ball. All right. Running the ball is great. You need it on your offense. But every once in a while, Neely, that running back is that last line of defense to give Shador that extra half second uh, to throw the ball from a blocking perspective. Well, what have you seen from the running backs? Have you been surprised, just kind of even keel? Or what have you seen out there? I would say even keel. Uh, every day, Coach Flea has them working on being able to pick up the block, uh, whether that's chipping the guy before you go out to do your assignment or staying back uh, for pass protection uh, the whole time. So uh, you see them working on it. You see them working on it daily. Uh, it was an emphasis in the weight room with Coach Mo to get the back stronger. Uh, and then Coach Lee is working on the mechanics, you know, dropping down, making sure you secure the block and hold it to give the quarterback an opportunity. So I like what I'm seeing. It is going to be a major part of it when you have – uh, a quarterback, generational quarterback like Shadour Sanders, you got to do everything you can to protect him. Offensive line was upgraded, but you're going to also have to have running backs and tight ends to help on that blocking scheme. What What are the tangible differences you're seeing now in the spring with the offensive line? We we talked about the upgrades. We we saw the you know the transactional nature there. Like, what are things you're seeing? You're like, mm, I like that. Ooh, that's that's different than what I was seeing last year. Tenacity. Uh, we got some guys who are just nasty with it. 
when you look at a Khalil Benson, when you look at a Jordan Seaton, uh, you look at now having Tyler Brown out there. Uh, right now, he's a right guard working out. Uh, these guys finish blocks, and they finish with that pancake move. They're on top of that defensive lineman, you know, when that whistle is blowing. I love the energy I'm seeing. But you talk about one of the things that I picked up on. It's on the D-line room as well. Last year, I spent a lot of time with those guys, and I filmed right here. This year, I have to do this or lift the camera up because there are some big boys in that room this year. Uh, man, I'm talking you pushing six, 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 five, six, seven, you know, across the board. All right. Now, what about that bendability? Because we had some tall dudes last year, Neely, but if you can't get low, if you can't bend it, uh, that height is, is all for naught. Uh, what else are you seeing along with that height? Height is good, but you need to be able to bend it. No, I think you're right. It's, it's, it's crucially important to have that flexibility, and that's something that the strength and conditioning staff, you know, works on with these guys. It's not just about throwing heavy weights around the room, how much you can squat or bench. They work with them on flexibility and have yoga sessions. Uh, they go to the treatment room and get stretched out so they can have additional flexibility in the hips and have some bends. You're right, Tyler. When the guy is coming around the end and he dips down on you, you got to be able to get down there with him and secure that block. All right, Neely, uh, talk to us about Rock. It was such a rough year. He did not get that waiver last year. Uh, really broke his heart, man. Broke broke the heart of a lot of fans of Tyler Brown. Back on the field now, ready to go for the 2024 season, but right now in the spring, I would imagine there's a big smile on his face. I, I, outside of the face you got to make when you're working hard and you're tired and that face, but his, his energy, his spirit, has. I would imagine, you, you confirm, uh, would be really high right now. Yeah, it has picked up. You know, last year he had to go through the motions. He could attend practice uh, and work out, but he couldn't play in games. So last year had to be one of the slowest years, if not the slowest year time-wise in his life. But now the time is here. He is eligible. He's actually going to graduate next month from Colorado. So when he's playing this fall, he will be a graduate student. Uh, he's mostly been working out at right guard at practice, but I've seen him post-practice, you know, get some reps in at center as well. But his energy – his, his belief in himself, his conditioning, off the charts. Uh, he was fast last year. I, I remember he, he he beat some guys in a foot race last year. Or do you see any tangible differences, uh, improvements with, with Rock, a.k.a. or Tyler Brown, a.k.a. Rock? What are you seeing from him just individually, having seen him at Jackson State, practice last year at Colorado, now another sprint Colorado. Sometimes that Eastern North Carolina comes out. Neely, you know how it is from the SIP. <laughs> when you see Tyler, like, what do you see? You you see a spring in his step. You see a bounce in his step. When he's in the building, you know, he's smiling. You see his infectious personality. When in the weight room, you see that tenacity. You know, he's leading uh, the offensive line and strength and the number of bench presses and squats and that kind of thing. You see him uh, leaning to his new coach, Coach uh, Phil Lodehold, and wanted to learn all he can from an NFL veteran. Uh, I think you're going to see the best Tyler Brown that we have seen in his years of college football. I think missing last year was actually a blessing in disguise for him uh, because now he gets to come be a part of this improved group versus a group last year that was much maligned in all the sports media. All right, Neely, you said your goal was to have some guys on that line that you would just be afraid to interview, like you would be hesitant to walk up to them. Now everybody loves Uncle Neely. We know this, but have you had have you met a, a dog yet, man, where you just been kind of hesitant to to roll up on him? Let me tell you, the answer, the proof is in the pudding. How many D line videos have you seen this spring? Just just oh oh Shane, you know, Shane, Shane, you and Shane go back at this point. Yeah, we so. go back. We we go back a ways now. <laughs> yeah, but man, we have some bullies on there, man. Uh we have some guys who have come into this program you know, who are starting and playing in other programs. Uh, you know, last year when Coach Prime was using that portal system, you were getting guys who may have been on the bench at Auburn or Alabama, Florida State. Now you're getting guys who are starting at Houston and starting at Indiana and other places. So uh, much changed tempo and, and on that offensive side of the ball as well as the defense side of the ball. And guess what, Tyler? You got a Hall of Famer helping coach that defensive line in Warren Sapp. He's here. He's engaged. He's teaching. He's instructing. He's fired up. Well, they're going to figure out soon that you are Sap's boy, so they're they're not going to they're they're not going to mess with you. Anymore. No need to be afraid. Anymore. 
Yeah, I, I, we good. You know, they know me and uh, me and Sap Daddy have a good rapport, so they're not going to do anything to mess with their coach's homeboy. So we all good. This is the man that won't get on a roller coaster, so I know he's just not going to mess with with some nasty. Deal. I mean, won't he mess with a roller coaster? <laughs> uh, Neely, uh, what are you anticipating? I know it's not official, at least unless you want to break some news here, because because you can you can always break news. Uh, I know that we have a limited amount of uh, scrimmages that we can have. Uh, including the spring game. Uh, do you think this Saturday? Or are we really going to be able to, to go at it on Saturday? I believe we will. I believe you'll, I believe you'll see just that. You get to do three, uh, and that is counting your, your spring game as a practice. So we got uh, two Saturdays between now and then, so I think we're going to you know pull that off. Uh, we did have referees at practice eight, uh, it, although it was not a scrimmage as far as taking people to the ground. Uh, the refs were out there and they were making calls because one of the things last year, this was one of the most penalized teams, particularly pre-snap uh, penalties in the nation. So got to clean that up. So whenever you can have refs who also have to work out during the, the off season, the spring ball, whenever you can have refs come to, to practice and call when the ones are going against the twos and twos against the one, it helps everybody get better because now, Hey, that's offsides or no, that was pass interference. or that was holding. So it helps people start to clean up the game when you really start getting into that scrimmage mode, when refs are going to be out there as well. All right. Practice number eight was on Thursday. As we sit here and speak this week is, is flying by. Uh, you had a chance to talk to uh, defensive coordinator, Rob Livingston after practice on Thursday. What was he talking about? Neely? Uh, just consistency, cleaning up the small things. Uh, I asked him directly about the red zone because, uh, as I said, the offense really had the upper hand uh, in the red zone, and he gave me a two-word answer, Travis Hunter and genetics. He said, you know, it's just not a lot you can do in the red zone against Travis Hunter, uh, which should do his accuracy and Travis Hunter, uh, his catch radius. So uh, I think that that's going to be a successful thing when we get to the real season and play other people as well. So uh, those are his concerns, making sure that we stay consistent in our learning and getting better with each practice because you don't have a lot of practices left. How much time is he getting with Travis Hunter on defense so far? You know, I would say that over the course of time, it's probably about 50-50. Uh, but there are days that, that Travis is more one thing than the other. Uh, I think that the focus for Travis – uh, it's going to be more time on offense so he can learn how to get in and out of those routes from Coach Jason Phillips, his wide receiver coach, uh, because we've seen Travis roll out of bed and can play defense with the blink of an eye. And so sometimes situationally he spends more time on offense in the receiver uh, room, but that flips in the middle of practice. He's the only guy out there with a gray jersey. So coordinators, uh, you got new coordinators on both sides. Uh, is is the concepts – is there more volume of new concepts on the offensive side than the defensive side? Is it about even? And you have to throw in the caveat that, that Travis is just so natural um, at defense as well, even even if there are new schemes there, I would imagine. Yeah, I think you have some, some new schemes, uh, of course, but Pat Shermer being co-offense coordinator last year, then given the reins the last couple of games, a lot of his things and nuances were kind of already there and that's just becoming more pronounced. Uh, I think with Coach Livingston, what you see with him doing is uh, there's not a lot of volume because he's making sure people have their assignments down before they move on to the next thing. Uh, so I would say that install-wise, you got more volume on the offensive side, uh, but defense is taking that time and making sure, hey, before we move on to this, any questions, any concerns, do we have you in the best position for you to be successful? Livingston, does he get fired up? Is, is he much of a yeller? Uh, you know, he's 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 got that you know Rico Suave smooth. Whenever you're talking to him, uh, if you just ran into him on the street, you you might think he just finished playing yesterday. He's you know clean cut, young. Uh, does he get fired up? He does get fired up. You know, the the helmets do have the protective pad on top of them, but uh, I've seen him headbutt players to get them going <laughs> as well. So he's energetic out there, man. He's running around. He's flying around. You know, 12 years in the NFL, uh, coaching the DBs with Cincinnati Bengals for eight of those 12. Uh, no, he is completely energetic, energetic, excuse me, and fired up. Neely, you've been around a lot of football in your life. Uh, with this level of coaching, uh, with coaches with NFL uh, pedigree, and, and you had that at Jackson State as well, uh, are you ever at practice, do you ever say to yourself, like, man, the, the level of, efficiency or the the level of complexity 
is just like reeking of, you know, this NFL pedigree we have of the guys running the practice. You see it all the time in, in the efficiency part of it. You touched it. There's so much done in such little time because these coaches, from the head coach to the coordinators uh, to the position coaches, have all spent time in the NFL where it is truly a business and we don't waste time because time is the enemy in football. Uh, I think you're, you're somewhere between 150 and 200 years of combined NFL experience uh, in this building when you add up all the staff positions together. Uh, and when you see them out on that field, man, it runs efficient. There's no wasted motion, no wasted effort. Then after practice, they're reviewing film to even clean up that uh, to get the best out of those situations, which is something, again, you know, that comes from the next level. So uh, when you look at the, the acumen of this staff, Tali, uh, it is unbelievable the number of professionals NFL-wise and their experience playing and or coaching or playing or working in staff positions that are that are in this building. So Coach Prime is not only out there coaching uh, on the field. We've seen it and we talked about it uh, in the Rewind, episode 25, uh, with his first-person uh, coach cam. Uh, but he's also coaching the coaches. And you got new coaches here this year. So he's running the entire program, obviously. Uh, what has that synergy been like? Uh, has it been pretty smooth with, with old faces and new faces and just – straight out new faces in the building uh, just with the coaches alone. Yeah, I was talking earlier, man, today about the chemistry between this coaching staff. And this is not to say that last year's staff was disjointed by any means, uh, but for this to be the middle of April, this coaching staff is moving like they've been together for years. Uh, you know, they hang out, they talk, uh, they have uh, install sessions together, they eat lunch together. All of them are trying to bring the best out of each other. And Coach Prime has instructed them, hey, do the same with the players. When in the warm-up line, touch and talk to everybody. We have to get this place feeling like a family because you got to have a why. It has to be bigger than you. And that only happens when you develop relationships. And that's not just with the players, but that's with the staff as well. So you see this staff is way more connected in April than last year's staff was in November. Wow, that's saying a lot there. Uh, all right, a guy that, that, that we go back with uh, and we love a whole lot, Coach Dancy, uh, gets to be uh, out on the field this year, moving up from that analyst position. What, what's up with Coach Dancy, man, here in spring ball? He's doing good, man. He's enjoying uh, coaching those edge rushers, the defensive ends, outside linebackers, bucks. They got so many different names for that position. Uh, and he and he is tenacious about it. You know, he is uh, instructing them on technique and, and getting that fire in their belly. Uh, to make sure that they they complete that job and that is get to the quarterback, disrupt the quarterback, and also set the edge so the quarterback or running backs can't get out too far. Uh, so he's enjoying this new role, man. Uh, you know, you see him talking to uh, uh, to Sap, you see him talking to uh, the uh, Livingston, and also with Coach Prime because he's learning and growing as well. But he's ready for this assignment, man, and and he's taking it on. And, and I'm I'm expecting big things out of Dancy's room. Uh, have you spent any time with Ralphie this spring, Neely? Have not seen Ralphie. At some point, Ralphie's going to come over here because they're going to start practicing, you know, for uh, her run. Ralphie is a girl. That's a fun fact. But have not seen Ralphie. And when I do see Ralphie, if Ralphie's coming this way, I'll be going that way. Like, I'm not going in. We're not meeting in the middle anyway. Look, there, there's Ralphie's cousin right there uh, over at Howard. I do see Ralphie's cousin. <laughs> I don't think at Green Stadium they're they're going to run out Ralphie's cousin out there. You're just going to have to enjoy it on on, on the jersey and your t-shirt. Uh, that is cool. That is so cool, man. Uh, Friday, day before what we're anticipating uh, to be a our first scrimmage of spring. Uh, do they go really hard on Friday? What what, what is a Friday practice like? Uh, well, it'll be it'll be Saturday. Uh, we're doing kind of a every other day schedule. So okay, Thursday, okay. eight practices in the book. Friday will just be film in the weight room, uh, and then Saturday will be when those pads are back on. Uh, I do believe that it's going to be high energy because there's a lot of times you see them out there and they're thudding or whizzing by each other, and they're starting to talk a little crap like, "Oh, I can't wait! I can't wait to scrimmage! I can really hit you!" Uh, so I, I think there's going to be some big energy and some big hits come this weekend. Neely, uh, final thing here. You know, this is the, uh, while it's the eighth going into the ninth practice, th this is like the third week of spring, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with anything in life, man, I don't care if it's a new relationship, your new car, uh, your new whatever. You know, the first two weeks is a honeymoon. 
you get the week three. Uh, if there's any fakery going on, if there's anything that's not authentic, it, it starts to wear off. Um, have you noticed, are the coaches more on top? Like, do you see any of that? Like, do you see people either for the good or the bad? Like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to see who this guy really is. We're, we're at week three here. Honeymoon is, we're getting into the grind now. Man, great question there, Tali. I think you do see that. Uh, you know, Coach Prime commented that in the first time his playing or coaching career, 100% of the people were back on time and ready to go. But just this morning, two or three people missed breakfast because it's only so long in that honeymoon that you can fake it to make it at some point the real you starts to come out. Uh, and then who really wants to be here when the pads start to come on and, and the hitting starts. So I think going into these next three practices, you're going to see that reveal itself more and more. Uh, I do think, as always, this time of year for every program across the nation, that portal door opens both ways. I think you're going to see some people because of opportunity and depth and competition that are going to start to look other places, just like people are going to start to look in. So we're going to be losing some people and gaining some people. But it's all getting back to what you're saying. Can't hide long, Tolly. When the pads come on and the hitting starts and the days get longer and the meetings start earlier, you really start to identify who wants to be here and maybe who wants to go be in the band. <laughs> in the band. So, Neely, as you sit there chilling in the – where are you? The recruiting lounge? The players' This is lounge? the recruiting lounge. In yes. the recruiting lounge. Uh, you you think between now and April 27th, you, you might see some some new faces rolling through that recruiting lounge that, that might put on a, a jersey and it might stick around for a while. It's already started. Uh, you know, the past couple of weeks, we've uh, had uh, unofficial and official visits, whichever ones are of, of nature at the time, and they've already picked up some commitments. Uh, but I also say, man, this is college football. This is 2024. You're going to have some people who are going to exit as well. Uh, and I think that you just have to look at when people exit, you know, what was their impact? What are you really losing? And then you look at the people who are coming in. What are you really gaining? Sometimes there's this thing called addition via subtraction. Uh, and so we just have to make sure we're wearing these things and keeping it in context because that portal door does swing both ways. But there's no doubt about it. Coach Prime is not finished building this roster for August 31st when we have the season over. It has been volatile in, in some areas. Uh, and some players have just been, you know, laying it out on the line. Like, hey, I got an extra 200K over here or just putting their bidding process <laughs> like very transparently. Um, do you think it will still be as wild, wild west in some situations in Boulder? Or do you feel like that part of it is while you, you know, people will negotiate their, you know, in their mind, hey, I'm fitting here. I'm going to get some burn. I'm not going to get some burn. Uh, do you think just this wild, wild, you know, bidding war, do you think that's going to touch uh, Boulder like any other place? Or, or will it be a little more laid back on that front? Uh, there's a laid back nature to it because of who the head coach is and his gravitas. And Coach Prime is able to articulate to people why they should focus on the NFL and not the NIL. And, and that's something that people have gravitated toward and understood his message. Having said that, he also understands that this program cannot be successful over the long haul without a strong collective, uh, without a strong NIL component uh, to help us recruit more and better talent. So you have to burn that candle at both ends. You know, you have to be able to tell people why this program benefits them in the long run. But you also have to have a strong collective, Tyler, because you're competing against strong collectives. You're competing against schools in the SEC and the South who have been doing this for a while now and really have a good bankroll behind them. And we're just getting started. So the collective here, uh, the alliance here is forming where you can donate to. Uh, and Coach Prime is pushing that and wanting people to participate in it because you have to have it to be successful in college ball. Absolutely. All right. Well, Neely, we are looking forward to uh, Saturday. One one final question has just come to me here. Uh, when, when's the last time you hooked up with Chef? Uh, I know you, ne Neely, don't miss no meals. I was about to tell you what Coach Prime <laughs> always says, Neely, don't miss no meals. And before I came to the what I'm calling the Today Studio, the recruitment lounge, I just left Chef. Yeah, a little pan Asian, uh, chicken katsu, eel sauce, and spicy mayo, always a hit. Uh, going up against beef shakta. That's a classic dish from uh, Pasang's homeland here. It means fried beef. We take flank steak, we cut it by hand. Uh, we top it with like a soy sauce, brown sugar, chili oil. It's awesome. Uh, going with an orange shrimp. 
And then we got, what do we got down there? We got veggie lo mein, chicken pot stickers, uh, pork and veggie egg rolls, sweet chili brussels. Up on the bar today, I don't know if you caught, uh, we got an apple and peach cobbler. I saw the peach cobbler. And then my ice cream, so. <laughs> Had an Asian theme today. Asian theme. Had some nice egg rolls, some nice noodles. Mm. I stopped at Publix and got a pre-made chicken sandwich with bacon and some mystery sauce on it. I, I I think you get the win, Neely. Every 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 day you get the win. You you got an executive yeah, chef there putting it down. Yeah. I'm jealous. This is my face of jealousy, right here. Right here. And this is my face of just come have a meal with me. You know, they, they have flights, Tommy. <laughs> they do. And I, I live in Atlanta. I can go directly to the moon from here if I want to. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to have to do that. A uh, really cool thing to check out on social. I don't know if it's up by the time you see this, but I want you to think Colorado football. I want you to think 3 6 Mafia. And I want you to think maybe somebody that you wouldn't put with three six mafia and i want you to put all that together uh that, that was was that from today or was that earlier this week yeah that was from practice eight that happened today all right so that's a little tease out there so go go take a cruise on the pregame show social media uh and see if you can connect the dots with today's practice in, in three six mafia I, I think you'll have a, a little bit of fun uh checking that out Look, we appreciate you guys hanging out on the pregame show network, giving you an update from practice on Thursday. Uh, we'll look forward to talking with Uncle Neely over the weekend. Uh, I think we'll have some exciting stuff from practice there. Uh, enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Uh, let, let that Asian food settle nicely there, Neely. It's nap time. The itis <laughs> is kicking in. <laughs> Should have never gave you money. Should have never gave you a chef. That's where we went wrong. <laughs> Uh, look, look, you just set it up there. Look, you're just pushing that food down, man. That is, look at that. Look at that. He's gone. All right, I'm going to. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate the support. We'll see you a little later right here on the Pregame Show Network.